at any time we should let them sleep for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received the just recompense of reward and this is talking about the old testament this verse is talking about the people that were under the old testament every recompense and disobedience received a just recompense of reward and that was a testament administered by angels according to galatians 3 19 and acts 7 53 verse 3 how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which had the first begun to be spoken by the lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard so we began to talk about the eden what happened in the garden of eden god gave man the choice and man made the choice to reject god to reject christ to reject god's offer so because of that god told man the day you eat of that tree you shall surely die and because god is a god of justice god is a just god a righteous and a holy god that's his character so as man earth man died separation man was separated from god the book of ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 tells us had he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins you were dead in trespasses and sins so man was dead man died that word death is separation and the bible tells us god said to adam where are thou and adam said i'm naked meaning i'm guilty and god said to adam have you eaten of the tree and that means condemnation came on adam so there was separation there was guilt there was condemnation man was judged and as a result of the judgment man's condition changed in genesis chapter 5. the bible tells us man became mortal or subject to physical death so we began to identify the fact that man is helpless man is hopeless because there's nothing man can offer that is acceptable the book of isaiah 64 verse 6 tells us that we are all as unclean thing and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags and we all do fade as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away so man is helpless man is hopeless and man cannot help himself so the only thing that god will do to save man is for god to save man by himself jonah chapter 2 verse 9 tells us that salvation is of god in ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 it tells us but god who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us has quickened us together with christ by grace we are saved hallelujah so we began to look at some concepts of, of salvation from the, the holy spirit in the epistles and we saw that the first word for salvation is the word reconciliation we that we are far off have been reconciled to god that's the first thing so we have obtained reconciliation secondly we saw the word propitiation that if any man sin, these things write are unto you that you sin not. But if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, who is the propitiation in First John chapter two, verse one and two. So we have the the propitiation, or Jesus is our propitiation when it comes to sin. We say reconciliation deals with distance, propitiation deals with sin, redemption. That's the third word. Deals with the price that was paid. The price that was paid to obtain our freedom. And Jesus didn't pay the price, but Jesus is the price. He's the price that was paid for our redemption. For as much as you know that you are not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold, but by the precious blood of Jesus as of a lamb without blemish. And then we also saw the word redemption in the Greek is the word agorazo or ex, ex, ex gorazo or apolotrosis or Lutra o, all those are words that define the word redemption from the greek in the first service we dealt with expatition and we dealt with the fact that jesus blotted out the ordinance of handwriting and we also dealt with the word substitution that jesus was our substitutionary sacrifice so those are five different words describing the concept of salvation given by the holy ghost in the epistles the sixth word is the word regeneration regeneration the book of titus chapter 3 verse 5 not by works of righteousness which we have done but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the holy ghost by the washing of regeneration that word washing of regeneration is used only once 
in the scriptures washing of regeneration and this washing is a one time washing it speaks of the act of salvation it's not talking of water here or water baptism it's talking about the act of regeneration by the holy ghost by the washing of regeneration so regeneration therefore is the vital work of the holy spirit that is what the Holy Spirit literally does in us. Let's get back to that Genesis 2.16. God gives an instruction and he says, The day you eat, you shall surely die. So if what man experienced by sin was death, then what salvation should give man is life. The day you eat, you shall surely die. So salvation offers life. Genesis 5.3 Adam gave birth to a child after his likeness and after his image and called him Seth. The word Seth means mortal, doomed to die or death. So in salvation, the Holy Spirit changes the condition. He changes that condition called death. He changes the condition to life. Regeneration. Regeneration. We read in the book of Ephesians, it says, um, you are dead in sins and trespasses. You walked, even though you were dead, you were walking. So death there is not extinction, death there is separation. Adam was still walking and talking, but he was dead. Adam, where are thou? I'm naked. He was dead, but he was talking. He was walking. So death is not extinction, death is separation. So if man died, then what man needed desperately was life. Life is restoration or reconciliation. Are we together here? So when man died, he left God's presence. So in salvation, the Holy Spirit gives life to a dead man. It's called regeneration. Giving life to a dead man by the Holy Spirit in salvation. The word is regeneration. That's the word. Regene, regeneration. John chapter 3 verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the spirit. Of water and of the spirit. Alright? That of water and of the spirit. The washing of regeneration. The washing of water. He's talking about the symbolic operation of the Holy Spirit in cleansing. That's why he used water. He's not emphasizing water baptism. He's talking about the effect of the Holy Ghost in regeneration, in the washing and the cleansing of the born again man. So he says, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit. That word and of the Spirit in the Greek is the word kai. Kai means a conjunction or a word that is used to explain something so what it actually means is except a man be born of water which is the spirit it's not like you're born again then you have to be born of water then you have to be born of spirit no born again is born of water is born of spirit so except a man be born again or born of the spirit or born of water same thing it's not three things it's one thing when we say you are born again what we mean is you are born of water what we mean is you are born of the spirit are we together here yeah, it's not talking of three different experiences it's one experience explained in different forms as it relates understanding verse six that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit so now he has streamlined it back to spirit so it's not like three things it's one next verse marvel not that i say unto thee you must be born again. So what he was talking about is born again. Hallelujah. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins that quickened us together with Christ. Question. Who quickened us? The Holy Ghost. Regeneration. He gave life. He quickened us. 
we were dead we didn't quicken ourselves he quickened us so salvation is the pure work of god without any human contribution we were dead he, the only thing a dead man does is when they bring you back to life you stand up you have no contribution in your resurrection so for any man to think I can qualify is just is just deceived because nobody qualifies. Salvation is of the Lord. Regeneration is of the Lord. Amen. I said amen. Look at the book of John 5:21. For as the Father raised up the dead and quickened them, even so the Son quickened whom he will. The word quicken means he gives life. So God gave us life in Christ by the Holy Spirit. God gave us life in Christ by the Holy Spirit. The word regularly used in the Bible is the word eternal life. Salvation means to have life. And that life that you receive at salvation, that life is called eternal life. James 1 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. 18. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creature. God gave birth to us. The word begat means God got walked into the labor room and pushed you out. He actually gave birth to you, indicating that you and God share the same DNA. He gave birth to you. So what is in him is in you. What cannot defeat him cannot defeat you. He cannot fail. You cannot fail because it's the same DNA. Am, am I teaching here? Of his own will begat. The word begat means give birth. First Peter 1 23 says being born again not of corruptible seed. The word seed is a Greek word sperma. Sperma. That means you're born again of, of the sperma of God which is sperm. Actually God's sperm gave birth to you. That means kebola namohata. That means your composition your entire composition is exact. God. Are we here? Cow gives birth to. Chicken gives birth to. God gives birth to. He begot you. You are begotten. Born. God gave birth to you. You are born of God. Born of God. I want you to sing. You are born of God. When you understand that there are things you cannot see. When you understand that there's a way you cannot walk. When you understand that there's a way you can you cannot allow things to run you around. No, 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 no. No. Whatsoever is born. Exactly. You're born of God. God actually gave birth to you. Of his own will of his own desire of his own good pleasure it was not by force you give god pleasure you are the pleasure of god i thought somebody would shout a powerful amen, amen. of his own will begat he us by the vehicle that he used in our in our birth is called the word of truth he begat us by the word of truth he used the vehicle of the word to give birth to us. Why? Because in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. So if he gave birth to us with the word, it means he gave birth to us by himself. Because the word is God. Of his own will begat he us with what? The word of truth. Who is the word? God. John 3, 5. Jesus answered, very, very, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Next verse. That which is born of the flesh. Huh? Huh? Is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is what? Who is God? Who is God? You are born of spirit. 
What are you? Spirit. Who is God? Spirit. Who gave back to you? God. Who are you? Spirit. So God cannot fail. You cannot fail. The DNA of God is at work on your inside. I feel like I'm talking to somebody. God can be defeated. You can be defeated. See that. You are the next big thing this world has ever seen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Somebody shout, I receive. Born of God. Born of the Spirit. Born after the image of him that created him. Hallelujah. The word regeneration is the Greek word palingenesia. P-A-L-I-N palin G-E-N-E-S-I-A It means to start again or a new beginning or a birth. In regeneration, you are born of the spirit. You are born of the spirit. Titus 3, 5 not by works of righteousness which you have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Romans 8.15 For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba Father. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 If any man be in Christ as a new creation, all things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. Galatians chapter 4 verse 5. To redeem them that were under the law. That we might receive the adoption of son. First Peter 1 23. Being born again not of corruptible seed. But of incorruptible sperma. By the word of God. The sperma of God. Incorruptible. That sperma is the sperm of God. The life of God. Containing God's DNA. So the Holy Spirit put the genes of God inside you. You carry the genes of God. He put it inside you at the point of birth. The washing of regeneration. He gave us Sotalaba. He put life. And that life has within its compartment. The DNA of God. So the next time somebody looks at you and says, you don't look successful, tell him you are blind. What did I say? You are blind. Because even the blind that are really blind can see that I'm successful. I'm not trying to make it. I was made when I came, I came already made. Shitabola Tobete. I'm teaching here. Eboratonaka Manangada. Second Corinthians 5.21 For he hath made him to be seen for us who knew no sin that we might be made. We are already made. I didn't come to church to pray to make it. When Christ came into me, I was made. The coming of Christ into me is my making. I'm teaching here. Uh -huh. We are not praying to make it. Uh -uh. When Christ entered you, you were made. He that speared not his son, but gave him up for us all. How shall he not also with him freely? So when Christ entered you, all things entered you. You are made. Somebody said, but things around me don't look like I am made because you allowed it. Somebody said, how did I allow it? You romanced ignorance. The moment you divorce ignorance and begin to romance knowledge, when the knowledge of your identity rests on you, your circumstances begin to fall in place. What are you talking about? 
The moment you know who you are, and you cannot know who you are till you know who he is, because the believer is in him. Where is the believer? In him. So to know me, I must know him because I can't know me without knowing him because I am in him. Lift your right hand shout, I am in him justified. He's in me glorified. Let your amen slap the devil. These are the things you know you succeed without effort. You're not a victim. You can never be a victim. You are born of incorruptible. What, what is it called? Incorruptible sperma. I want to say something. Hmm. Your spirit is the Holy Spirit. Did you hear that? You don't have a different spirit outside Holy Spirit. There's nothing like my human spirit and Holy Spirit. Are you a monster? How can you carry two spirits? <laughs> you only have one spirit. What is the name of that spirit? Holy Spirit. So you and God are one spirit. You are what you are. You don't have. You are one. You are. You and God are one spirit. What is the name of that spirit? Holy Spirit. The spirit at work in you. What is the name? Holy Spirit. Because you are born of God. So if you are born of God, what is in God is in you. What is in God? Spirit. What is in you? Spirit. That which is born of spirit. He didn't say that which is born of spirit has spirit. He didn't say that which is born of spirit has spirit. No. That which is born of spirit is spirit. One spirit. God punished the devil. And his mother-in-law. Can the Holy Ghost fail? You cannot fail. The Holy Ghost is called the spirit of truth. So you cannot be deceived. Are you with me here? Yeah? The Holy Ghost is called the spirit of truth. He is the paracletos. Or the paraclete. That means he's the teacher. Okay? Helper. Counselor. That means right now, you have counselor. You have a helper. You have teacher. So you can't be in a situation where you don't know what to do. No. The believer always knows what to do. Say, I know what to do. Shout it loud. I have direction. Say, I have direction. I know what to do. No matter how confused a situation, I know what to do. Because my spirit... Knows all things. I'm not confused. I know what to do. Because my spirit knows all things. What is my spirit? The Holy Spirit. Am I teaching here? Please, are you catching my flow? Religion can't take that. It's too radical. But that's the truth. Galatians 2.16 Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. No flesh. You are justified by the faith of Jesus. And that faith came by hearing the message of Christ. You heard the message. You opened your heart. 
the message entered when the message entered christ entered when christ entered faith entered so that entrance is your birth and that birth is not a feeling you don't have to feel anything it's a knowing Knowing, knowing. Did you see that? Did you see nervous? Knowing, not feeling. Knowing that a man is not justified. So to know, you have to know you're justified. Not to feel. You won't feel anything. But you know something. And that knowledge affects what Christ has done in your life. Yeah. It affects it. It sets it in motion. It gets it going. Am I teaching here? That knowledge gets it going. Born of the Spirit. I'm born of the Spirit. I'm born of the Spirit. I thought somebody would say it. Yeah. I have the life of God. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 6 verse 4. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. That place is not talking of water baptism. Do they like water? What he's talking about there is that when you received Jesus, you were baptized into Christ. Yes. That salvation is baptism. It's not the water. The experience of Christ in you is baptism. Yeah. Receiving Christ is baptism into Christ. It's not like going to the river and soaking in water. No. I told you in the beginning, water is symbolic. Did I say so? So met, what are there is a metaphor. What are there is figurative. It's figurative of a spiritual reality that takes place on your inside. You are born or baptized into Christ. That is, you are soaked inside Christ. Baptism means immersion. That is, you are immersed into Christ. That is, your identity ceases to function. You have taken on a new identity. That identity is that from now you are Christ. You are now Christ. Christ. You are buried into Christ. So, you are Christ. You are buried in. You are Christ. When people see you, all they see is Christ. And if you be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. What promise? Promise that Abraham should be the heir of the world. Yeah, you are an heir of that promise. That Abraham owned the world, you too. You own the world. Because you are Christ. Somebody say, I am Christ. No, I didn't say, say I didn't say, I am Christ. I am Christ. Uh -huh. That is important. <laughs> you are Christ. That is, you are baptizing to him. So you are, you are him. You are him. You are in him, he is in you. No difference between two of you. No difference. If he's glorified, you are glorified. If he's righteous, you are righteous. If he cannot fail, you cannot fail. Because you and him are one. Are you catching this? Regeneration. To give life. Verse 13 of the same Romans. Neither yield you your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, 
but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead. You are already alive. And your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Ephesians 2.10 For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God before ordained that we should walk in them. We are the handiwork. We are the handiwork of God sourced in christ created in christ means the raw material that was used to create this you that is called the new man was scooped out of christ are you following pastor praise please come let me show them something for purpose of concept and understand this is christ jesus christ jesus god decided to to get children out of Christ. To get what? Because Jesus is the prototokos. That's the Greek word for prototype. Sample, model. <laughs> God punished the devil. <laughs> so, since Jesus is the prototokos or the prototype, God decided to bring out children in Christ. So what did God do? God source for raw materials inside Christ. The material he brought from Christ, he used it to form you. So you are created in Christ. You didn't hear that. In. That is the creation took place inside Christ. So you are Christ's. And because you are created in Christ, the creation is on to good works. That means you are now a product of good works. Because everything in Christ is good. I'm talking to somebody here. Somebody shall ask me you are talking about. Created in Christ Jesus on to good works. Which God hath before, before ordained that everybody that is created in Christ should walk in them. That our walk should be a walk in good works. We are not producing good works to be in Christ. We are created in Christ. That is why, because of where we came out from, we produce good works. We don't produce good works to be in Christ. Uh -uh. No, no, it is because we came out of Christ. So, because we are, we are created in Christ, the natural response that follows us is good works. We don't do good works by effort. We do good works naturally. Because that is where we came out from. Am I talking to somebody here? That which is born of spirit is spirit. That's who you are. And spirits don't die. The new man. <laughs> I know. Before you claim all. <laughs> Let me escort you. <laughs> the new man. <laughs> Praise God. Created in, 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 in Christ. If any man be in, 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 in Christ. In the new man. In Christ. If any man be in Christ. Shato, shato, shato. Ephesians 4.24. And that you put on the new man. After God is created we are in righteousness and so, the raw material that has been used to fabricate the new man which was sourced out of christ what are the raw materials called righteousness and so when you walk what is walking righteousness when you walk what is walking true holiness not fake holiness so if there is true, it means there is fake. Which one is fake? Long gown. Which one is fake? No earring. Which one is fake? No scarf. I, I feel like I'm talking now. That is fake holiness. True holiness is what God has done in the new man. Am I teaching good here? True holiness is not dressing. True holiness is in the heart. 
In the Old Testament, it was outward appearance. In the New Testament, we are the circumcision that worship God in the spirit and have no confidence in the flesh. Philippians 3 3. Say, I hear. Sit down. Somebody shout, I'm born of God in righteousness and true holiness. In righteousness and truth. The new man. The new man is after God. Is after God. The drive of the new man is after God. He may make mistake, but he won't sit there. He will stand up because his drive is not after mistake. His drive is after God. That is why even when you do bad as a new man, you are not comfortable because that is not your environment and you will not be happy till you get back to your environment where is the environment of the new man after god i'm teaching here only a man that is not born of god will make mistake and be happy if i let me tell you even when a born again child of god sin he has no pleasure in the sin to know that you're a child of god is that god takes the pleasure out of sin where an unbeliever will do it and be happy with chocolate and tea you a christian if you do it your heart will be beating very fast you'll be sweating under air conditioner because you know that you have moved into an environment that is not your own i'm teaching good when a pig fall inside mud does the pig spread a table and be happy yes because mud is the environment of a pig but when a sheep put his leg inside mud, the sheep will start crying until they bring it out because that is not the environment of the sheep. When you are born of God, you have no pleasure in sin. You may sin, but you won't stay there. You will jump out because the new man is after God. I'm teaching good here. If you're hearing me shout, I hear, hear. The desire of the new man is after God. And that you make mistake doesn't mean you are not a new man. No, 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 no. Remember, it is not the good works that created you in Christ. You are first of all created in Christ. Then you do good works. So if after your creation you don't do good work, it does not change the fact that you are created. It just means you are acting beside yourself. The Greek word is paralegismo. You are pretending to be who you are not. You are acting up. When you are born again and you lie, you are not a liar. You are a pretender. You are pretending to do what you are not. What you are not. Any wrong thing you do after you are born again is a pretense. That's not you. You are acting beside yourself. You are acting beside yourself. So you better come back to your senses and act yourself. Are we here? If you're hearing, say I hear you. Remember from the first day we've been trying to answer a question. Can a Christian lose his salvation? That is what I am still answering till now. And I've not yet arrived at the answer. But you must have been answering it now. Thank you Lord. What a way to answer a question. Your teacher asks you a question. You tell him, sir, sit down. We need to answer it for 30 days. That must be a very serious question. <laughs> Amen. So regeneration means you start again with the life of God. To start again with the life of God. Now, not what Adam had. But what you now have is called eternal life. Adam didn't have that. Church, look at me. Adam never had eternal life. Never. What life did Adam have? He had human life. God gave Adam human life. For Adam to have eternal life, Adam has to make a choice for Christ. When Adam should have made the choice for Christ to have eternal life, Adam rejected Christ and went for eternal death.
So Christ died to redeem the state of man. So today, as a man with physical life, you need to receive Christ to have eternal life and be free from eternal damnation. So anybody not born again is a walking corpse. He's dead even though he's walking because no life until Christ comes. Teaching good? I am come that you may have life. How many of you have eternal life? Lift your hands and shout, I have eternal life right now. Can I hear your amen? What is eternal life? It is forever life. Something that can never be changed. No, not forever living. Eternal life is not forever living. It's forever life. There's a difference between life and living. You have forever life. Not forever living. Forever life. Life that can never change. Expire. Or be terminated. Forever life. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. So regeneration therefore is not conversion. It's not repentance. It's not sanctification. And it's not justification. When we say you are regenerated, we are not saying you are repenting. We are not saying you are converted. No. That's not the meaning of regeneration. Please don't forget that. Regeneration is not repentance. It's not an experience. It's not an experience that you have. Regeneration is the birth. That is the actual birth. Let me ask you a question. When a baby is born, do we say the baby has experienced a birth? Huh? What do we say? The baby is born. Birth is not an experience. Birth is the beginning of life. But after the baby is born, can we say the baby is cold? Yes, because the baby is already born. And the baby has been exposed to air conditioner. So the baby is cold. That is an experience. But that experience wouldn't have been there if the baby was not born. Am I teaching here? So regeneration is not an experience. Regeneration is the birth. That is when the life of God is released into a dead man and that man comes alive, born again. The word born again doesn't mean born twice. For you to think born again as born twice is illiteracy. Born again means born anew. Again, in Bible grammar, doesn't mean twice. It means the beginning. That's what we have to teach you because there are some words in the Bible that sound English, but their interpretation is not English. Okay? It's called new birth. New birth or birth or born. That again means the beginning. It's not like I began before and beginning again. No, that's English. This again in the Bible is the beginning. Except a man be born again. That is, except a man be born anew. Or, except a man be born from above. Yeah. To be born again means to be born from above. Because he that is from above, is above all. Am I teaching? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. John 5 26. For as the father had life in himself, so had he given to the son to have life in himself. First John 5 11. And this is the record that God had given to us eternal life. And this life is where? In his son. Let me ask all of you. Is it on record? What is on record? Somebody say it is on record right now that I 
has eternal life. Nothing can change it. Say it's on record. Look at it. This is the record. So it is on record. So you don't need to say, Father, write my name in the book of life. Eh -eh. It is already on record that all of you here that have received Jesus, you have, not you will have. You have it now. So there is nothing like heaven at last. It's heaven now. You didn't hear me? When, when is heaven? Now. Why is heaven now? Because you have what is eternal life? The life of God. Let me ask one of your questions. God and heaven, which is bigger? God and heaven, who is living where? God and heaven, who is living inside who? Is God living in heaven? Heaven is living in God. So God is bigger than heaven. So, So if heaven lives in God and God is in you, where is heaven? So why will heaven be at last? Where are you getting it from? I'm teaching, I'm teaching. If you're hearing, shout, I hear you. So it is not heaven at last. It is heaven at first. That is the first place you enter. Ephesians 2, 5. Even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ. By grace, are you saved? Next verse. And had raised us up together and made us when are we sitting now where are we sitting in heavenly where is heaven in christ jesus where is christ in you the hope of glory so where is heaven in you heaven is in you heaven is inside you now so it is not heaven at last it is heaven now it is this heaven now that is the guarantee for the physical heaven at last. If you don't have the heaven now, forget the other one. I'm teaching. Please, if you're hearing me, say, I hear you. Touch your neighbor, say, I made heaven long ago. This is radical. Eh? Is this radical? Religion won't let you see that. It takes revelation to see that. It's not heaven at last. One woman looked at me one time. She said, ah, pastor, all this one, you're suffering like this. May we make heaven at last. I said, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Bind you. I made heaven long ago. <laughs> don't, don't rob me of heaven with your ignorance. And I refuse to be humble in the face of illiteracy. It's only a fool that will be humble in the face of illiteracy. Am I talking to somebody? That's why you shall know the truth. Somebody shout at me, container. Part of my content is heaven. Amen. I am in Christ. Christ is in me. Heaven is in Christ. Christ and heaven are in me. I am so precious that God left heaven to come and live inside me. I am more beautiful than heaven. That God left heaven to come and live in me. Jesus said, I am my father. We will leave heaven and come inside you. And make you our home. So your body is the temple of who? The Holy Ghost. Where is the house of the Holy Ghost? Your body. So watch this, watch this. God the father is God in creation. He is Jesus in redemption. He is Holy Ghost in regeneration. It is still God. He is God in creation. He is Jesus in redemption. He is Holy Ghost in regeneration. It is still the same God. Am I teaching good here? Yeah. So when you hear Trinity, Trinity is a concept of redemption. When redemption came into the mind of God, Trinity was created. The reason for Trinity is the fall of man. Because since there's a fall of man, God must become a man. That's Christ. So since God became a man as Christ, as Christ, he was localized. Could only be in one place at one time. And to redeem mankind, a localized God cannot redeem all of mankind. So God 
in Christ when he went to heaven became the Holy Ghost to live in everybody at the same time all over the world so he can carry out his regeneration work in people's lives across the globe without time difference am i teaching here yeah it is the same god the same god it's just that for different purposes he had to put on different shapes and form to serve the purposes according to the different times are we here because if you had remained god he will not save you because god doesn't die but for man to be saved, God has to die. But God cannot die as God. Do you know that God doesn't live in heaven? Have I taught you that? He doesn't live in heaven. Why? Heaven is too small to contain God. So where does God live? He lives wherever he was. Where was he? Well, watch. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So heaven and earth is not where God dwells. Because if there was a day, heaven and earth was created, where was God before that day? Wherever God was, that is where God is. So where does God stay? Watch, watch. The Bible calls God the immortality that dwelleth in unapproachable light which no man has seen nor will ever see so where god dwells is light nobody can approach it but god wants to help man so god stood up and walked out of god then god looked at god and god said to god you go i stay here so that god that came is called christ great is the mystery of godliness that god is manifest in the flesh shout i hear as your amen will come like thunder receive revelation receive revelation receive revelation receive revelation receive revelation, receive revelation. sit down cross your leg shout i'm in charge You know, you know, Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18. And all things are of God who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and had given to us the ministry of what? Reconciliation. Next verse. To wit, that God was where? So Christ is God. So for God to save man, God, remove God, kept God. And put on man called Christ. Oh, the love of God. God stripped himself of God. Put on humanity. Somebody say, where did you get that? Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. Let this man be in you, which was also where? In Christ Jesus. Who being what? In the form of God, taught it not robbery to be equal with God. Give me the amplified. Go back to verse 6. Who although being essentially one with god and in the form of god possessing the fullness of the attributes which make god god the jesus is god say i hear, I hear. which make god god did not think this equality with god was a thing to be eagerly grasped or retained so what did he do next verse but stripped himself he removed see see this is what god did pastor praise holy for me this is what god did this is god mike mike this is god so when god saw your state hopeless helpless sinner doomed to die god so loved the world so god did like this mm. this is god he threw god down put on man and came to the earth He came to the earth. When he came to the earth, he said, whatever all of you have done, I have come to identify. If you are a sinner, I take your sin. Everything you have done, I take it. God, don't punish them, punish me. So the punishment for you was put, so God punished himself for you. God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, shout yes! Sit down, let me finish this in his
So as Jesus, he can be killed. But you can't kill God. So God took away God so he can be killed. Because the sentence to save man was death. For God to save, he has to die. But he cannot die as God. So he has to remove God so he can die as man. The man Jesus. Jitolabaha. So when he died as Jesus, he didn't rise because he was Jesus. He rose because he quoted the scriptures. In hell, Jesus began to quote the scripture because the scripture is the life of God. He began to say, Thou shalt not leave my soul in hell, nor allow thy holy one see corruption. He kept speaking scripture. When the scriptures got fired up inside him, the scriptures quickened him, rejuvenated him, and on the third day, according to the scriptures, he came out of the grave. When he came out of the grave, Mary came to touch him and said, touch me not. I'm on my way to present the sacrifice on your behalf to the Father so it can be accepted, so that you can be free forever. My God, your God, my Father, your Father. He went and presented it. After presenting it, the same God became Holy Ghost. He couldn't come to you as God because you are too small to contain God. So he packaged himself as Holy Ghost. And he can enter you and stay inside you. And enter you and enter you and enter you. And he can be inside all of us at the same time speaking through all of us. How? Monda, Colado, Gibraga, Corota. Is he not inside you? Where is your own contribution? Egebo, Jekola, Brodango, Kekelebo, Egebaga. Bro, Jake, ke, 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 Ula Magonda, hey, Reko Takabayana, Aya, Korada, somebody shout Holy Ghost. <laughs> Sit down, let me close this service. As your amen will slap the devil, you are reigning in life. You are reigning in life. Lift your hand, say, I am not making it, I made it in Christ. When did I remove my suit? <laughs> when I became God. Eh? <laughs> Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. God punish the devil. You're stepping into a new level. You're changing dimensions. Favor on your life. Grace on your life. Manifest the goodness of God. If your amen is louder, receive it by grace. Receive it by grace. Confusion is over. Confusion is over. Stagnation is over. In the name of Jesus. You are blessed. Bless, 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 blessed, blessed. Somebody lift your hand and shout, I am blessed above nations. I didn't hear your amen. amen. Woo! Somebody shout, this is the record. I have eternal life. The book of Second Peter 1 3, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things. That pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue look at verse 4 you will love this we are by are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by this ye might be partakers of the divine nature somebody shout i'm a partaker of the divine nature say divine nature is at work on my inside you know what you just said God is at work inside you. Partakers. The word partaker means somebody that has a path in something. You are a partaker. You have a path in the nature of God that is divine. That's why you can drink poison and not die. That's why you can trample on serpents and scorpions and nothing shall by any means. You know why? Immortality is trapped in your mortality. 
You are mortal here, but immortal in. So anytime this one wants to fail, you use this one to keep this one. A man's spirit shall sustain his infirmity. Who am I talking to here now? Immortality in your mortality. That's why when the venomous beast fasting itself on Paul and stung him, pa, they waited to see him die. He shook off the beast and felt no harm. Bible says when they waited for a long time, they changed their mind. They said, this man is a God. There are people waiting for you to round up, but they will wait for too long and they will change their mind. They will wait for a long time and they will change their mind. Lift your hands and shout divinity is trapped in my mortality. I'm a partaker of divine nature. God cannot be poor. I cannot be poor. He cannot be sick. I cannot be sick. He cannot be stranded. I cannot be stranded. The sperm of God and the DNA of God gave back to me. As he is, so am I in this world. Let your amen slap the devil. The glory is in the house. The glory is in the house. Christ, the hope. Okay, sit down, sit down, sit down. Somebody say, I have divine nature. That means you are not a melancholy. You are not a sanguine. Eh? You are not sanguine. You are not melancholy. You are not choleric. You are not introvert. You are not extrovert. You have divine nature. Your nature is divine. Is God choleric? Is God introvert? What God is not, you are not. Don't let a psychologist define you because psychology cannot see you. Where are you? In Christ. Can psychology see inside Christ? So they can't define you. Don't let a doctor label you because microscope cannot see you. Can microscope check God? Where are you? Born of God. Am I teaching good? Divine nature. Your nature is divine. You carry what is in God. So what cannot happen to God cannot happen to you. You are a child of light. Walk in the light. It, that nature is called incorruptible. That nature is superior to Satan. Don't even waste your time mentioning Satan's name. To mention the name is a waste of time. There are better things to mention. Let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. Satan is a corrupt communication. You are complete in him. Who is the head of all principalities and powers. Think about Shatta. That word head means the pleroma. That's the Greek word. Pleroma means the corporate headquarters of the Godhead. Jesus is the corporate headquarter of the Godhead. And you are complete in him. That's who you are. Somebody shout, I hear you. Don't let anybody label you contrary to who you are. Don't let them. Stop them. Don't be humble and let somebody kill you. Stop them. You are in him justified. He's in you glorified. This nature is superior to Satan. It is superior to sin. Even sin is afraid of your nature. You know why? It is incorruptible. Incorruptible. The nature cannot be corrupted. It can't. That's why 1 John 3 9 says, Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Why? His sperma. Sperma. The sperm of God remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. Talking about the nature of the born again man. The nature of the new creation. Talking of the life of God in a man. That life cannot sin. The life, the zoe, the eternal life in you cannot sin. John 10, 28. And I give unto them eternal life. 
and they shall never perish neither shall any man pluck them it is an open challenge jesus is making an open challenge he said all these ones are in my hand jesus is so sure of what he did in his death burial and resurrection he is so sure of the life he has given you that he has thrown an open challenge no man can pluck them out of my hand no man somebody say i am in jesus' hand nobody can take me out my father which gave them me is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hands so jesus is saying you have double protection you are in my hand and my hand is inside my father's hand so if they burn anybody let him enter my hand and enter my father's hand to remove you what is it called eternal life I prophesy as your amen will come like thunder, as you will stand up where you are, under the sound of my voice, you are secured in Christ. You are preserved in Christ. You are kept in Christ. Your future is guaranteed. Your tomorrow is sure. Your destiny is sure. In the name of Jesus. Lift your two hands up and say with me very loud, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am born of God. I have eternal life. The life of God runs through my system. I have redemption in his blood. I have the Zoe of God. God cannot be poor. I cannot be poor. He cannot fail. I cannot fail. He cannot be sick. I cannot be sick. I am in him justified. He is in me, glorified. I declare, my righteousness is of God. Can your amen come like dirty thunders? I prophesy throughout this week, you will reign in destiny. You will reign in righteousness. You will reign in glory. You will reign in the finished work of Christ. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, my father. It is well with you. Everything is working for you. You are graced. You are graced. You are graced. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. I decree that every area of need in your life, the supply system of God, swallow that need. Swallow that need. Swallow that need. That from this day, whatever you put your hand upon to do shall prosper where others fail you will succeed in the mighty name of jesus you are blessed above all nations you are blessed above all nations you are blessed above all nations in the mighty name of jesus it is done if you believe it let your amen come like thunder welcome back ladies and gentlemen welcome back i believe you've been touched affected impacted by the word of his grace oh my goodness 